what's up? Welcome back to Ground Zero Salem. I'm your host, Pat, as usual. We are listening to uh, this My Dying Bride that I picked up in Seattle, the Trinity CD that compiles three of their EPs. Um, I've commented before I'm not the most seasonal or, or environmental listener. However, I find that fall is kind of the exception. Um, find myself listening to a lot of like that medieval 70s hippie folk shit that I like. A lot of doom spanning the subgenres within doom. Some melodic death metal, some melodic black metal as well. Uh, been really into this, uh, that latest Paradise Lost, the uh, Infera Bruo CD on Bind Room, which is excellent, and a few other odds and ends this week in the car. So it's time to continue on and explore the Expedits, go on a journey through my IKEA shelving, take a look at what LPs that I got for you. Cheers. I am drinking uh, a Shipyard pumpkin head here. Not a fan of this stuff. However, the lady of the house brought it home, so I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Ah, let's see, where were we at? I have to pull these out a little bit so I don't get lost in the stacks here. Alright, so we were on Amen Duel. I don't have too much to say about Amon Duel because I'm so ignorant about this style of music. Um, it's definitely spacey. This is called Hijack. It was originally released on Atco Records and uh, the pressing, this is a re-release of Repress on uh, Rhino, although it has all the old Atco labels and stuff. It's on red vinyl. Weird 70s European otherworldly, transcendent, um, progressive rock, I guess. Cool band. I need to explore more of their stuff. Keep getting caught up in all this metal foolishness. I should be expanding my horizons. No, but, uh, yeah, cool band. Lots of interesting shit going on. Uh, Carnival in Babylon's a really good one. I, I don't know if where in the uh, chronology that is in relation to this, but it's got like a weird psychedelic pelican on it. I used to have it and I flipped it like a moron. Um, song has a there's, there's a song on here called Archie the Robot. I think that's cute. Next up Amorphous Privilege of Evil Alright, so some of the best finished death metal this is a re-release on Relapse comes out in white. Great stuff. Early Amorphous, right after members of Abhorrence went on to start a new band. There's a song on here called The Vulgar Necrology, Necrology that uh, was an Abhorrence song. Very uh, gritty, subterranean, evil death metal. Far cry from what they would do later. Um, Tales of a Thousand Lakes is probably my favorite. I got it on CD. I, uh, I shot this video before, right after I woke up at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, wasn't quite together, and uh, try not to be the most self-conscious YouTuber, but I, uh, I have a tendency to kind of stutter and say shit wrong, get facts wrong, and there were so many fucking discrepancies, I just had to don't fucking delete it. Uh, after the Amorphous, we have this Angelic Upstart singles collection independent punk singles collection. It is called Anthemic uh, Melodic it's Great Simple Three Chord Pub Shouts Oi UK82 kind of stuff A lot more melody than like say a Foreskins kind of band Printed in their sleeves Released on Get Back Records who were a good reissue label for a lot of a lot of that British punk stuff, as well as some other shit. These band, this band was uh, on the left, left-leaning side of the political divide. There, one of their records was called Solidarity. It's sort of a socialist bent lyrically. If anybody cares, I don't. Angry Samoans back from Samoa. This is a fucking ripper great record. 
early 80s punk rock. Straight up bratty punk. Pretty fast for its day on a label called Bad Trip. Just classic after classic on it. This is their first album, probably their best. All their stuff is good though. I have a CD called The Unboxed Set that has four LPs on one 70 some minute CD and it's all great. They got more garagey and kind of influenced by old psych and stuff later. This is, um, however, fucking furious. Um, imagine like kind of a Ramones thing, but like maybe twice as fast. Gas Chamber's a great song. Uh, the Todd Killings, Lights Out is their big hit. It was on a compilation that I had years ago, a Rhino comp that got me into a lot of old punk and the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones cover it. Poke so far into the front of your brain, a fork in your mind will drive you insane. My story goes when they used to play Boston back in the day, back in the early 80s, there would be a row of people up front pretending to poke themselves in the eyes with like plastic forks and sporks and shit. Great shit. All right, time to get into the Anthrax. Oh, before we get into the Anthrax, let me make a mention of a record that I have shown before, so I'll make it quick. This band, Angus, from Holland, I think. Good, solid, early 80s heavy metal. Almost kind of NWO BHM, but without the B. They're not from Britain. If they were from Belgium, it would work. Uh, awesome. Kind of priest. Priesty, kind of Sirith Ungoli. There's a sort of almost slightly doomish tinge to it. Great soaring vocals from what I remember. Um, I don't spin it too often, but it's a very excellent LP. Just a rare find. It was I bought it on in a lot on eBay. Had no idea what it was. Like the cover art. You got this. These uh, fucking centaurs there just chilling. Um, very very cool. I'm Medusa Records. Now Anthrax. These are out of order, of course. Here's the first one. Fistful of metal. First, uh, like real metal album I bought. Second one was Nuclear Assaults Game Over. Uh, I was attracted to the gore of the cover art, um, even though it doesn't make any sense. Like, is the fist punching out of the guy's body? I, I guess so. Is he punching him? I don't know. I don't know. Terrible but great cover art. Uh, the only full length to showcase vocalist Neil Turbin. Got a great set of fucking pipes. Very much a traditional metal vocalist, you know, kind of like Rob Halford. Kind of, kind of style. Um, with, with songs like Metal Thrashing Mad, Death Rider, Panic, Subjugator, Soldiers of Metal. You know, it was very unironically, unapologetically metal. Also, Danny Wilker of uh, Brutal Truth and Nuclear Assault fame played bass, but he was kicked out of the band by uh, Neil Turbin, mostly, uh, from according to what I read, because he was taller than him. Interesting. I've read the Wilker autobiography and the Scott Ian one, and, you know, that's what both of them said. Apparently, Neil Turpin was a real dick, but great set of pipes. And out of order. We got uh, Armed and Dangerous after that. The debut of Joey Belladonna. It's a lot of scary big hair melding into the darkness there on the cover. Um, very much like the transition between their early, traditionally influenced speed metal, speed thrash kind of stuff, going into the sound that they were known for afterwards. Um, a cover of God Save the Queen, heard better covers, Metal Thrashing Mad Live, Panic Live, Panic's one of their best old songs. Armed and Dangerous is a great fucking, great song, great chorus on that one, and a song called Raise Hell. Fucking cool little EP. Both of these are on, uh, were on Megaforce Records. Good old Johnny Z down in uh, Jersey there. Responsible for a lot of great stuff. I don't have uh, Spreading the Disease on any format yet. I just ordered it on cassette from a friend of mine, Five Bones. I really like Spreading the Disease. But after that, we've got Among the Living. And it's one of those albums that I've I used to worship as a kid, and I've retroactively started to almost kind of dislike it a little bit, slightly. I mean, the songs are still great. Um, you know, you can't fuck around with the breakdown in Indians. 
caught in a mosh, I never need, need to hear again. I'm just kind of tired of it. I am the Laws of Jam. You know, it's a great, it's a great record. You know, if you like thrash metal, I feel like there's a lot of revisionist historians that are just like, Anthrax fucking sucked, man. No, Anthrax was fucking great back in the day. You know, if you were a kid into metal in the 90s, you explored their back catalog and you wept at how fucking good this shit was. However, um, you know, the whole wacky thrash era kind of, you know, ruined a lot of stuff like this, in my humble opinion. Um, top notch playing. Good stuff, good shouted backing vocals, courtesy of Scotty, and you know. Um, but I just don't enjoy this record as much as I used to, and it's I've listened to it so many times, it's pretty much like etched in my brain. So I'll listen to something else. Um, kind of the only record of theirs like that. I never really cared for State of Euphoria, and I learned to appreciate Sound of White Noise a lot more. I fucking hated that record when it came out. Um, after that was the big one when I was just getting into music getting into heavy metal. It was the one that was on the radio and on Headbangers Ball on MTV. Uh, this is on Island, as was the last one. Fucking great dark record. You know, I feel like it, it doesn't quite get its due and its its place in, in metal history. Um, you know, much longer songs, uh, a little bit slower, more brooding. Um, Joey's vocals are slightly more mournful. Everything is, is pretty, you know, lyrics that are a lot more based in reality. And there's the cover of uh, Got the Time by Joe Jackson, which really is a great cover, and they don't change it that much, which is what's cool about it. The original song is, is pretty heavy and intense in its own right. You know, it's a power pop guy. But they, they really just add distortion to the guitars and, and its metal-style vocals. The, you know, musically, it's almost identical. And, and Joe Jackson fucking rules. By the way, I'm sure I'll talk about him later when I get to Jay. So then I got some anti nowhere league. Um, made a bunch of mention about these guys lately. I did that. Uh, I talked about that live record, that live in Yugoslavia, and I talked about this one. I don't know, months back in an update. So to as a quick revisit, it's just rude, crude, simplistic, anthemic fucking ball kicking not very nice sardonic I don't know I think I've, I've met my prerequisite of a uh, number of adjectives there but animal you know with this fucking weird bondage gear and shit awesome record you know if you want to check out some great UK punk curious about it this is a good good starting place Great center labels, that anti-nowhere league icon, the spiky fist thing, WXYZ label, record label. Don't know anything else about that label. I don't know what else they put out, or how many other labels this came, came out on. A uh, couple of anti-scene records, three anti-scene LPs. They had a few before this one. This is one is when they started to get a little bit more of a knack for catchy songwritings. It is called Eat More Possum. This is a reissue on TKO Records out of Atlanta. It's got a printed inner sleeve. Some good liner notes talking about the beginning of the band. This band is from North Carolina. Uh, I think I mistakenly said they were from South Carolina before. Center labels there band logo and song titles on them. Uh, talked about these guys before. Great sandpapery, gruff vocals, kind of got a southern rock sort of tinge to them, like the dude from Molly Hatchet, if he were gargling glass, kind of at the very root of it, very bluesy and soulful. Um, chainsaw guitars, great simple riffs, quick music. Um, Today Your Love, Tomorrow the World, they, they just kind of cover a few bars of the Ramon song as an intro and then they go into a song called Stormtrooper that's just a raucous, you know, adrenaline pumping chorus, animals eat them. <laughs> um, lots of little vignettes in between that are almost like wrestling promos from uh, the Cosmic Commander of Wrestling, the Dean of Sods. A lot of their stuff was uh, kind of insider baseball, wrestling shit, a lot of, a lot of joking around. Great band. Jeff Clayton's a hell of a, hell of a vocalist. 
fuck all, fuck all y'all. It's got washboard on it. It's just, it's very, like, fucking southern, but also, like, ripping vicious fucking punk rock. Um, this is a compilation of some EPs and stuff that came before. Uh, a lot more stripped down, not quite as uh, memorable, but way more vicious. Blood of the Freaks. It's got the Blood of the Freaks EP, respectively. They cover Two Headed Dog by Rocky Erickson. There's a, a single that was on Ajax Records, a couple of them actually, um, and an interview, which is uh, pretty funny. Like These guys are relatively self-aware and, and pretty smart. Great fucking gatefold there. This is also a TKO release. Nice, nice record on this, you know. If you're into colored vinyl, that's pretty great, you know. Uh, printed in her sleeve, also more liner notes about what was going on with the band at the time. Really cool shit. Fucking one of my favorite punk bands, easily up there with Sloppy Seconds for me. I just like trashy, you know. I like the scummy side of punk. Um, this is my favorite LP of theirs. This came after Eat More Possum. It's the next one in the succession, I believe. Anti-Scene, Here to Ruin Your Groove. I talked about this one as well. Talked about it on my uh, my Rock and Roll Summer update episode, whatever. Uh, also on TKO. Fucking one of the best fucking records of this ilk, man. Just loads of fun. Piss and Vinegar. Those fucking vocals, again, are great. Songwriting's kicked up a notch uh, as far as riff quality, catchiness, leads, um, other instruments are involved. There's some cool keyboards on people like you. Uh, Funk you. I got a lot of songs about pro wrestlers. Uh, Self-induced lobotomy, where they do a little homage to the Ramones again. Needle in the spoon, which is a uh, Skinner Leonard Skinner cover. Skinner Leonard cover. Um, yeah, just all in all, just a, a 10 out of 10 kick-ass fucking rock and roll record. Also hardcore record. Also punk record. Just fucking awesome. There's, uh, if I can dig up the links for you guys, I'll, I'll put it down at the bottom. There's a live set of them playing a, a local access children's show. I can't remember the name of the show, but they had a lot of indie bands and weird bands and stuff. And it's these gnarly biker looking guys with gauntlets like playing for a bunch of little kids. And they're interviewed afterwards and they're super humble and super nice. And it's it's just rad. And we got Aries Kingdom. Whoa. That poster scared me. Um, <laughs> Aries Kingdom, Turn to Dust. Great foil stamping cover there. Members of Order from Chaos, minus Helmkamp. Thrashy, blackened, very unique, great fucking metal. You know, there, there's parts of it that just, they, I feel like they have the spirit of the first two, maybe three Bathory records, but it's executed in a completely different way. Just great stuff. Um, very apocalyptic, lyrically. Um, just awesome, awesome band from Oklahoma City, I think. Uh, one of the most underrated bands on the Nuclear War Now roster, in my opinion. I, I know that they're well-heralded and well-respected, but I feel like them, Sacrifix, and villains never really get their due as far as like great bands on that label. Um, got an Armored Saint live EP. I don't know. I, they're a good heavy metal band, and I know that like they have their place in American metal. Uh, John Bush is a great vocalist. Completely, I mean, same vocal style generally that he did in Anthrax, but way more of a metal feel, I guess, in these days. But um, I don't know. Nothing I, I've heard by them really does it for me. This this EP is the thing I like the most by them. It's got, it's got some good jams and it's really great live sound. Came out on Metal Blade Records. It's uh, not that, you know, typical Metal Blade center labels, black, black vinyl. Collage. I'll give it some more spins at some point when I'm in the mood. Know. Got this 80s picture disc pressing of Metal on Metal by Anvil. <clears throat> SPI Paris. Uh, classic Canadian heavy metal. Great stuff. Kicked up the heaviness a notch for its day. Um, 
you should be familiar with them. Most people have seen the documentary and all that stuff. Um, this is the only one I really need. I'm not the biggest anvil head, but the songs on this are great. Uh, unfortunately, it's an 80s picture disc, some of which sound really good, I've noticed, but the, it's, it seems like it goes like one way or the other. They either sound pretty damn good, or there's so much surface noise that it's bordering on unlistenable. Sadly, this is in the, the latter camp. Um, uh, what are you going to do? This band, Ostakosk, Scandi Punk, um, not jocking the whole DB thing like a lot of bands were doing then. It's uh, more like kind of pogo punk, kind of like happier sounding. Everything is in, I'm 99% sure this band's Swedish. There's not enough umlauts really to make it finish. I'm going to go ahead and say they're Swedish. <laughs> uh, I'm not an expert on most things Scandinavian, um, at least punk, but I do like what I like and this band's awesome. Um, DNA Records, reverse colored center labels there, printed in her sleeve, actually it's a booklet, poster kind of deal. Fun band. Definitely uh, anthemic. Well, it would be anthemic, anthemic if I knew what they were saying. Ah, uh, got this Atomic Rooster, self-titled. Nice, uh, brooding '70s hard rock proto metal, if you will. Um, Proto Stoner, whatever. They're, the first song on here, Death Walks Behind You, was covered by Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost did a bang up job. There's some like creepy piano on it. Awesome stuff. Unfortunately, this copy's kind of beat. There's some skips and stuff. Um, which is too bad because it's a fantastic record. Um, you know, if you like. A lot of people kind of just stop at the 70s Pentagram stuff and Sabbath, and there's a lot more stuff like that that came out during that decade that is awesome so you know dig a little deeper I haven't even dug that deep but I mean Wicked Lady's awesome Black Widow these guys um, there's a bunch more Bulbous Creation there's a lot to dig into there Flower Traveling Band from Japan just the heavy metal of its day it's great shit check out Budgie that shit's great uh, I got this is a definite one of the brighter gems of my collection the first atheist piece of time. Weird pressing, weird label. It's on Active Records, which is a British label. I don't know if it came out on this first and then got re-released on probably Roadrunner. Um, kind of yucky baby blue center labels. Printed inner sleeve. On They Slay, which I think was what was the name of the original band? I think it was Ravage, if I remember right. But yeah, very. Early on, these guys in Hellwitch were very technical and um, instrumentally proficient for their day. Lots of intense bass skills. I believe this bassist died. It was a van accident or something, um, which is too bad. I mean, this record's awesome. You know, I not much of an unquestionable presence guy. Um, I don't really need much more atheist than this in my life, but this is some great, great proficient early death metal awesome kind of vomitous like mid-range not too different from like maybe obituary style vocals maybe a little bit higher but yeah fucking gnarly good stuff I uh, got an attitude adjustment bootleg of their dead serious demo if I remember correctly Eric talked about this a while ago on his bootlegs uh, update very well done bootleg as I say Attitude adjustment while you wait. Um, thrash crossover stuff from California. I was trying to remember if they were from LA or San Francisco. I kind of want to say San Francisco. Uh, awesome. Fast. Fast, fast hardcore. This is like almost the ori original layout of the demo down to the T there. Cool stuff. Um, Certainly if you're 
into any hard, like hardcore crossover from the 80s, the California bands had a certain snottiness to them that, like, say, SOD and Carnivore didn't. And uh, these guys are a great example of that. Uh, they were buddies with Hyrax. You know, they played a lot of shows with bands like Dr. No. That, that whole scene. They got... I'm trying to remember if they got more metal or more hardcore later. I know that at some point, I believe they just dropped the adjustment and they were called Attitude. Anyway, um, I have this and um, the American Par Paranoia full length on CD, and it's all great. Awesome, awesome stuff. Kind of a, a, a dodgy, possibly not legit pressing of uh, Mental Funeral by Autopsy here. I picked this up at a time where I was getting really excited about raw, primal death metal. That certainly fits the bill. Like, maybe about 10 years ago or so. Um, when I was a death metal kid in the 90s, I didn't like stuff like this, which is... I don't know what the fuck was wrong with me. I was more into, like, suffocation and shit like that. Um, this is great, of course. I mean, it's a classic. You know, it's got its share of doom and gloom and... Just fetid clouds of fucking rotting diarrhea hanging over the fucking graveyard type shit. Um, Chris Reifert played in death on screen bloody gore. Just fucking awesome. I mean, I shouldn't need to say any of this if you're a death metal fan watching this. You know, you should know there's tons of stuff that sounds like this now. A lot of autopsy worship going on nowadays. They're getting their just due finally. Some weird imprint called Final Holocaust um, that I think is Eastern European and might be Russian. When I got this, I was so excited because I couldn't find a vinyl copy of it anywhere, and um, the vinyl was really nasty, like dirty, and uh, thankfully, it plays fine now that I cleaned it properly. Great shit. Go to your home. B-52's self-titled record, the one with Rock Lobster on it. Awesome, zany, early 80s, new wave, baby. Just um, male and female vocals. Party music, good times. You know, you can't fuck with Rock Lobster. The first song, Planet Claire, is awesome, too. You know, I know a lot of people just probably know them through Love Shack, which is a jam unto its own. But uh, this, is, this is a fantastic, fun record. After that, we got this BGK, which I already talked about. Um, quick mention, some Dutch hardcore punk. Owing just as much to, I think, of faster American bands as it does to European stuff like Discharge. Um, awesome. Great. This is everything they ever recorded. It's on Alternative Tentacles. Cool. Nuclear chimneys on one side and your iconic Alternative Tentacles bat on the other. It's awesome. It's you know, a lot of lot of bang for your buck and goes by quick when you listen to it because it's that good. Bad brains. It's bad brains time. Everybody should at least have a respect for the bad brains, if not a complete adoration and love, just for the fact that they were some of the best musicians. In their genre at the time, they were trailblazers. You know, they helped invent a style of music, like several styles and genres within hardcore and punk. Four guys from DC came out of that scene, couldn't play shows, moved to New York with no money, completely changed the face of that scene, played the fastest, had the best fucking tempo changes, stop on a dime, the bust in fucking Right Brigade alone should have you coming back for more. Just fucking killer stuff, man. Great message, positive mental attitude. You know, they weren't perfect people. I'm sure the guys in the dicks and the big boys can attest to that. That's a whole divisive subject. I'm not even gonna open that can of worms. But, uh, fucking music's great. Great, great stuff. Had such an awesome, awesome influence on hardcore in general. Fucking awesome. This is, uh kind of DC era stuff before they moved to New York that was on Roar Records who released a lot of interesting stuff from New York by the way originally a cassette this was a re-release on Caroline of a bunch of unearthed demos and stuff a lot more slowed down but still very fast for its day as far as punk rock goes 
wearing their influences on their sleeves. Um, they did a song called Redbone in the City on it that sounds a lot like their take on the Sex Pistols. Cool song, great song actually. And they're, I don't have Rock for Light, which is a lot of re-recorded stuff from the self-titled that Rick Ocasek produced and apparently is sped up like in the studio. Um, this is after Rock for Light, Eye Against Eye on SST. Fucking another game changer. A lot more uh, slowed down, grooved out kind of songs. A little bit more of, you know, guitar heroics on it. Dr. No, fantastic guitarist. Great stuff. Influenced a lot of stuff in the mid-80s in New York hardcore. The record after this influenced a ton more stuff as far as uh, slower, even slower, more groove-oriented kind of shit. Quickness. You know, big influence on, like, quicksand, I feel, and, um, I don't know, a bunch of other shit. Whatever. It, it just... They just influenced everything, you know? We got Baphomet. This is a bootleg. It's called Inherit the Dead. It is uh, an alternate take of The Dead Shall Inherit, which was their only full length on Peaceville before they had to change their name to Banish due to legal shit. This is perfect death metal for its day. Um, not overtly technical, but played very well. Chunky, foreboding. Um, just rhythmic, great deep growls. Oh, God. I mean, it, it's fucking Buffalo all over, you know? I mean, early Cannibal Corpse, uh, Eternal Torment, Malevolent Creation, small but great scene. Small in comparison to other places, but awesome scene back in the day. Uh, this is a scrapped version. I think this is better than Dead Shall Inherit, personally. Uh, it's much more, it's a very raw, abrasive recording, and there's a, there's a quite a, like, not half, but a bunch of songs on here didn't make it on onto the Peace Hill record, and they're good, they're good. I, I'm a, I'm a nut for this band. There's a few more things I need to track down, seven inches and stuff, but. Then we got this Baphomet's Blood. This will be the last one before I get into, it looks like I got Bathory. No, I got Bastard after this. Yeah, I'm going to need a while to talk about how awesome Bastard is. But this is Italian speed metal, satanic speed metal. Lots of fun, lots of fun shit going on. Iron Bonehead Records. Uh, members of Blas... Oh my god. Blasphemo Fager, I think. Something like that. Um, stripped down and wiry fucking... Definitely into their venom and their... Of course their bulldozer. You know, distinctly Italian sounding, but type stuff. I stopped for a second there because I went over my limit and it cut again. So hopefully that won't be too much of a mess when I edit these two together. I've been doing that lately. Just, I don't know why. It says I got 47 minutes. 33 cuts off. What the fuck is that shit, man? All right. Well, what are you going to do? Um, that's it. We got a uh, bastard and we'll get into some Bathory stuff. Maybe... I don't know. We'll get a ways through the bees. Maybe we'll get up to Black Flag next time. Um, thank you for stopping by. I will uh, see you guys later. Probably record another one sometime this weekend. I hope everybody's enjoying their life. Bye-bye.